Welcome back to Teaching Statistical Thinking. In our last video, we talked about looking at the relationship between two variables where one of the variables was numeric and the other was categorical using side-by-side -side box plots. Today we're going to look at the relationship between two variables where both of them are numeric using scatter plots and correlation. Throughout this video, I'll be referring to correlation as simply the letter R. The correlation is a measure of association which is the average of the product of standardized variables. So it'll be important to keep in mind how we standardized a variable. Remember from previous videos, we subtracted the mean and divided by the standard deviation so that the new variable was in units of standard deviation. That'll be really important and you'll see why in a minute. Before we get into the actual calculation of the correlation coefficient, I want to give you some intuition for how it works. I've drawn seven scatter plots here, and how they vary is by how closely the points cluster to a diagonal line that matches up standard deviations for x and for y. I've marked off the mean of x and the mean of y in each of these plots. Let's start with the middle one. The data cluster or data cloud looks pretty much like a circle. Let's think about what the standardized variables are doing in each of the quadrants that divide the circle. In the upper right hand quadrant, okay, those observations are above the mean of x, so they'll have a positive standardized x. Those points are above the mean on y, so they'll have a positive standardized score for their y. When we take the product of a positive by a positive, we get a positive. Now let's look at the lower right quadrant. The, in the, for those data points, x is above its mean, but y is below its mean. So x will have a positive standardized score, y will have a negative one, a positive times a negative is a negative. Let's look in the lower left quadrant. There, x is below its mean, so it'll have a negative standardized score. y is below its mean, so it'll also have a negative standardized score. A negative times a negative gives us a positive. In the upper left-hand corner, the x, the, uh, for those observations, x is below its mean, so it'll have a negative x standardized score. y is above its mean, so it'll have a positive y. A negative times a positive is a negative. Now you'll notice in that scatter plot, there's about equal points in each one of our quadrants. About the same number will be positive as will be negative, so they'll cancel each other out and we'll get a correlation close to zero. Notice what happens in the scatter plots to the right. They're clustering more and more along the diagonal that has a positive slope. As the proportion of points that fall in the positive quadrants outweighs the number that fall in the negative quadrants, it's pulling our co correlation towards a positive one. If all the points fall on the line, we get a correlation of exactly one. The same thing happens going left, but now we have a negative slope in our point cloud. As the points move closer and closer to the diagonal line that matches up standardized scores of x and y, our correlation gets closer and closer to negative one. So that's basically how the correlation coefficient works. Now let's take some actual data points and do the calculation. We're going to look at two variables. I've got nine movies and I have the audience score, how much the audience liked the movie, plotted on the x-axis. I've got the critic score plotted on the y-axis. I have nine movies that we'll plot. So for the first movie, their audience score is 50 and their critic score is 50. For the second one, the audience score is 60, the critic is 45. The third one is 60 and 40. The third one is 70 and 55. The third one, or the next one is 70 and 50 then 70 and 45, 
then 80 and 60, 80 and 50, and 90 and 55. Those are my nine data points. We can see that the cl point cloud is upward sloping, so we know we'll have a positive correlation. Now I'm going to mark off my point of averages. The average of my x variable is 70, and I'll write it here so we remember. The standard deviation of my x variable is equal to 12. For my y variable, or the critic score, the average is 50. And the standard deviation is equal to 6. We need to know those to calculate the standardized variables. To calculate the correlation, we need the average of the product of the standardized variables. So let's try it for one point. Let's try it for the point 90, 55. 90 minus the mean divided by the standard deviation standardizes the 90. 55 minus 50 over 6 standardizes the second. Then we want the product. So that's equal to 20 over 12 times 5 over 6, which is 100 over 72. So this point here adds 1.4 to our correlation coefficient. Now we do it for the other observations. 80 is 10 points above its mean, so 10 over 12, and it's 10 over its y, so 10 over 6, and it gets us back to 100 over 72, so it also adds 1.4 to our standardized variables. This observation here is 10 points above on x, but it's 0 points above its mean on y, so the product will be 0. For these three points, they fall at the mean of x, so their standardized scores for x will be 0. When we take the product, it'll also be 0. Okay. Now for this point, is 10 below on x, and it's 10 below on y, so it'll be 10 over 12 times 10 over 6, and again we're at 1.4. This one is 10 below on x, so 10 over 12, times 5 over 6, and it's at 0.7. And finally, our last point at 50, 50, or 50, 50, is going to be at 0 on the y, and so the product, again, will be 0. So now we have each of our observations standardized on their x and on their y. All we need to do is take the average. To get the average, we sum them up and divide by the number of observations. We have three 1.4s, so they add up to 4.2, plus a 0.7 is 4.9, plus five zeros leaves us at 4.9 as the sum of our standardized observations. Simply dividing by 9, we come up with r is equal to 0.54. Simple. Now, I've done a lot of rounding in my calculation of the correlation here in terms of the standard deviations and the standardized scores. If you use jump or a calculator to calculate the correlation, you'd see that it's actually 0.58. So we get pretty close using just a marker and a light board. Now, there's a few points that I want to point out before we end our lesson here. The first is, recall that the correlation is unitless. It's the average of the product of the standardized variables. So any transformation we do to the x or y, as long as it doesn't change the standardized score of that variable, it's not going to change our correlation coefficient. I also want to point out 
that it doesn't matter whether audience score is on the X or on the Y and whether critic score is on the X or Y. The variables can be interchanged on the axes and you'll still get exactly the same correlation. The third thing that I want to point out is a couple of cases to watch out for. The first one is outliers, and the second one is nonlinearity. If I have a scatter plot where almost all of the points show no correlation, but then I have an extreme outlier, it's going to pull my correlation towards 1. So a single point can have a large influence on the correlation. Also, if my observations have a strong association between x and y, but it's not linear, that correlation can be approximately 0, even though there's a very strong relationship between x and y. So always plot your data before you calculate the correlation to make sure that outliers and nonlinearity aren't a problem. The last point that I want to make today is actually going to have us refer to a graphic that was in the 2011 Gates Annual Letter. In that letter they showed a graphic that I'm going to present here that plots the relationship between disease burden and IQ for 80, 184 countries. You'll see in the scatter plot that it's very linear, and it's a strong linear relationship. As disease burden is increasing, average IQ is decreasing. Now it's very tempting for us to make causal statements about the relationship between these two variables, but because this is observational data, we have to remember correlation is a measure of association, but not causation. In this data, we also want to remember that we've got data that's been aggregated. Each point represents one country. Okay? Each country is made up of lots of individuals, which we've summarized down to a single point. So we've thrown a lot of our variability away. Correlation on this aggregated data is called ecological, and it can often overstate the strength of a relationship. What I want you to do in this graphic is I want you to look at it very closely between now and the next video. I want you to estimate as best you can the mean and standard deviation for each of the variables, disease burden and IQ. I also would like you to th guess, give your best guess at what the correlation is for this data. In the next video, we're going to be using what you learned about correlation today to take it a step further to actually calculate what's called a regression line that will help us predict y from x. So stay tuned and we'll see you then. We've got a question from one of our students, so I want to introduce Catherine. Catherine, come on in, and you want to ask your question? Yes, Professor Stengel. What are these ellipses, and how did we get them? Okay, good, great question, Catherine. In these ellipses, you can imagine marking off plus and minus two standard deviations in each direction. Then we simply draw the ellipse so that about 95% of the observations fall in our ellipse. Remember, if they're bell-shaped in two standard deviations, about 95% of our observations will fall within two standard deviations. And that's how we get the ellipse. Got Thank it? Thank you.